September 21 in Umwahia. Governing Council of the Obafemi Awolo University, Ileife, has sacked another lecturer of the institution who was found guilty of sexual harassment against a female student. This is said in a statement issued on Tuesday by the Public Relations Officer of the University, Abiodun Olarewaju. According to Olarewaju, the decision to dismiss Adebayo Mosobalaje of the Department of English Language in the Faculty of Arts was taken by the University Council at its last sitting on Monday, September 6th. The dismissal comes years after the institution sacked a professor of management accounting, Richard Akindele, over sexual harassment. Two weeks ago, the university management formally inaugurated an anti-sexual harassment policy. Meanwhile, the Director General, National Youth Service Corps, Brigadier General Shuaibu Ibrahim, has threatened to apply sanctions uh, according to the NYC bylaws on recalcitrant core members. Ibrahim said this on Tuesday during the swearing-in ceremony of the 2021 Batch B set of core members in the NYC FCT orientation camp, Kubwa, in Abuja. Ibrahim, who was represented by Suleiman Abdul, the NYC FCT coordinator, charged core members to always be guided by the oath of allegiance they have sworn by always obeying the law. The things our ardent hope that you will keep up your good conduct throughout the exercise. You must comply strictly with all camp rules and regulations and be obedient to your course officials. For the avoidance of doubt, we shall apply appropriate sanctions on recalcitrant core members in line with the provisions of the NYC bylaws. The oath of allegiance which you have just taken today is solemn. I implore you to always find time to meditate over its spirits and letters and be guided by same throughout the service year and beyond. Happily, the federal government and other stakeholders are leaving no stone unturned in the efforts to address this challenge as clearly demonstrated through various policies and programs. A group, North Central Renaissance, wants the president to emerge from the geopolitical zone in 2023 election. The group, during a press conference in Abuja, appealed to the Nigerian voters to support the dream of producing first president from the North Central region. Our correspondent, Gaza Yakubu, now reports. At a world press conference to mark the end of the Medin Congress of the North Central Renaissance Movement, chairperson of the group, Dr. Ngarubu Ketsu, noted that the North Central has been politically excluded from producing the highest office in the nation. Having been deprived the opportunity to render stewardship at the level of president and vice president now since the advent of democratic rule. This is the essence of our gathering. And of course, to chart the way forward uh, in how we pursue this goal until it is gotten, and our deadline is 2023. The chairperson, who expressed confidence in producing a qualified candidate for the country, said observation has shown that the North Central has the required criteria to produce a president. Because we've seen the records of what people refer to as, as the best that came and ruled us from other uh, parts of the country. They were just former ministers, former governors, former senators, uh, former vice presidents, and former presidents. We still have them in the North Central. But I believe North Central will offer more. I've just de de described our real ability to manage diversity. It will be an asset in our quest for national unity, harmony, and peace. And so, uh, when we achieve unity, harmony, and peace, prosperity follows naturally. We are not very developed. We need to do more. The conference was attended by delegates from the North Central, including the FCT, and advocated for support from Nigerians considering that the zone had never produced a civilian president or vice president since democratic rule. 
Gaza Yakubu, Trust TV News, Abuja. You're watching Trust TV News Update coming up after the break. Plateau State Governor Simon Lalong has relaxed the curfew in Joss North local government area. Details and more coming shortly. Get latest updates on current topical issues and breaking news by downloading the Trust TV mobile app on your Android devices. Go online, click Google Play Store, search Trust TV, install the app, and get doses of unfiltered information on happenings all over the world in your pocket. Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. My name is Samuel Dada. Yakubu Isa, and I'm going to be the Jiji. And you know, Musa. I want to have a kid, but I'm going to have a kid. I'm going to have a kid. I'm looking for private jobs. Sometimes you get employed and the process of payment, you know, you undergo some kind of stress. Thanks for staying with us. This is Trust TV News Update. Now let's have another look at some of our top stories. Plateau State Governor Simon Lalong has re relaxed the curfew in Joss North local government area. Plus, Department of State Services DSS has preferred a five-count terrorism charge against two detained associates of Yoruba Nation agitator Sunday Ademo, popularly known as Sunday Iboho. On health matters, Nigeria Center for Disease Control says Nigeria's COVID-19 cases have risen to 196,487 on Tuesday with 597 new infections. The NCDC stated this via its verified website on Wednesday morning. It said this in the nation's total it said that the nation's total infections since the index case in 2020 attributing the surge of the third wave to the highly transmissible Delta variant and low vaccination rates across the country. The Public Health Agency also announced that 17 additional COVID-19 related deaths reported on Tuesday increased the country's fatality figure to 2,573. And CDC reported that the new infections were reported from 13 states and the FCT. Minister of Labor and Employment Chris Ingege has said that contrary to what he described as propaganda by the striking members of the National Association of Resident Doctors, no doctor or health worker in Nigeria is owed their monthly salary. The minister said this on Tuesday at the opening of the meeting of the Presidential Committee on Salaries with the leadership of the Joint Health Sector Union, Johesu in Abuja. The minister said the propaganda machine of the association is changing the reality of the federal government's efforts to reposition the health sector. Ngige referred to the presidential waiver for employment into the critical health and defense ministries in view of the general embargo on employment and assured that doctors illegally recruited will have their services regularized in due course. Now, as part of efforts in the fight on drug abuse, Chief Executive of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, Buba Marwa, says premarital drug tests for intending couples will be conducted. Trustee Viz Maradia Umar speaks to some people on the desirability of the test or otherwise. It's quite unfortunate that many youths in the country are involved in the use of illicit drugs. Many marital problems like domestic violence and the crashing of marriages are largely attributed to the use of drugs, prompting the National Drugs Law Enforcement Agency to suggest a compulsory premarital test. Will this law go a long way to prevent 
or to stop the high rate of drug abuse among youths in Nigeria. I see it as a very welcoming idea because it has to do with the mindset and the psychological issue. Sometimes some people can ask subconsciously because of the, the, the effect of that um, um, substance or that drugs that they have taken. Then I think it's also good because um, there is this popular saying that says something that you know will not kill you. So by the time that it, the, the intended couple gets to understand that, oh, this is a challenge my husband or my, my intended husband or the wife have, then they can be able to work together and see a therapy for counseling. I feel it's a good thing. It's not entirely bad. It's another way to ensure that people's lives are safe and um, people are not just making any rash decisions. But also, is it something that can be sustained? Because there's a possibility that if you're not using drugs before marriage, you could start using drugs after marriage. So the reason behind the compulsory testing might not be entirely justified. I feel it's a nice idea because most people who get married to drug addicts have no idea initially. Um, they have no idea that probably their spouse or partner is addicted to drug. But I think a compulsory drug test would be a nice idea, just like we have HIV test and pregnancy test. A drug test will at least can reveal the shocker before it's too late. In a telephone interview with the spokesperson of NDLEA, Femi Baba Femi speaks about the importance of the test. It's important and it's in the interests of the Wubi couples. It's important because from our experiences, from our findings, quite a number of people, especially young adults these days, get into marriage and only to discover that um, quite a number of things happen within their homes whether the husband or the wife begins to be violent and uh, such um, violence are uh, most and what we are saying is this we don't want a situation where people will get married only to kill themselves in their homes or to discover after the marriage or after the wedding that the other partner is a drug addict. The fact that illicit drug use is linked with different forms of violence in marriages and among the youths, the NDLEA is intensifying efforts in reading the society of this menace. Martia Omar, Trust TV News Abroad. Now, in other news, farmers have asked for a reduction of 19% interest rates charged by commercial banks on agriculture-related loans. Some of the farmers who spoke to Trust TV's correspondent Gaza Yakubu on the difficulty they face accessing loans. Many Nigerians are small-scale farmers who rely on subsistence agriculture as a means of survival. Most of them have no access to government loans. He says they mostly do not assess this loan because of the 19% interest rate charged by commercial banks. They say they voted billion to assess farmers. They are saying farmers should assess these uh, billions through commercial banks. The government is trying to give farmers money at 9%. You ask me to pay you 10% to be able to get that money. So my borrowing uh, for my, my borrowing uh, expenditure goes to 19%. The effort of the government in providing these loans according to the farmers is well intended, but the method of application is not convenient. If you, if you are taking that bank loan, all that applies to getting a loan from the bank will apply to you. Yeah, but what are lots of you in, in farming, why, why will you get 90% to pay back? They advise the government to change its policy direction towards agriculture by providing an institution that can deal directly with farmers. Is that they better create a system where the government, the money from the CBN will go to that organization is to distribute to farmers, assess the farmers' requirements and distribute to them. They don't have to go through commercial banks. These farmers are of the opinion that if government resources are well channeled, the agricultural system would take a rightful position. Gaza Yakubu, Trust TV News, Abuja. Now let's turn our focus to some foreign stories. Forces from the Tigray region have killed 120 civilians 
Within two days in a village in Ethiopia's Amhara region, local officials said on Wednesday. The killings happened in a village 10 kilometers from the town of Dabad on September 1 and 2. According to Siunet Ubalem, the local administrator in Dabad, the Chalachu Dagnu, the spokesperson for the nearby city of Gondar. The spokesperson for the Tigray forces did not immediately respond to a request for comment. A four-story building collapsed after a landslide occurred in a village in Shanxi, China. Luckily, residents have been evacuated and no casualties were caused. And now in sports news, Memphis Dupai equaled Johan Cruyff's goal record for Netherlands as the star attacker scored his first hat-trick for his country on Tuesday. The Barcelona forwards surpassed Wesley Snyder and pulled level with the legendary figure with an impressive display for Louis van Kaal's team. Dupai struck three times and set up another in the Uranias 6-1 home win against Turkey. The Barcelona player now has 33 goals to his name for his country from 7-1 appearances. Finally, Uganda has been striving to speed up commercialization of agriculture to increase local household incomes with the help of Chinese technologies. Uganda and China have been operating the China-Uganda South-South Cooperation Project over the years through a tripartite agreement with the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. first phase saw the project introducing new technologies from China to Uganda, technologies like improved varieties of, of mushrooms, improved varieties of apple, improved varieties of maize. Uh, in the second phase, we had an extension of these technologies into the communities. The third phase was born out of demand and necessity to upscale the achievements of both phase one and phase two to commercial uh, proportions. The farmers will benefit in terms of mastering the knowledge of production of rice, mastering the knowledge of production of, uh, of millet, uh, foxtail millet. This is uh, technology from China. They will master agronomic practices. They will also benefit from the machinery capabilities of the industrial parks. From the China uh, part, they will be sending experts to be working at the community level to help us uh, improve some agronomic practice. Uh, but the idea is also to scale uh, the way the operations when it comes to production, but put an emphasis on how we become more effective uh, uh, and how we can improve productivity. So the third phase, uh, we have more resources, both uh, from the government of Uganda, uh, also FAO, but at the end, uh, the government of China. This brings us to the end of Trust TV news update, but you can click the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and also follow us on all our social media handles for latest news updates. Also stay tuned to the channel 164 on Star Times. I am Ayubelia. Thank you for watching.